Hi kids, I've heard that you're going to be reading Nim's Island. Everyone in your school, that is so special. That makes me really happy. And isn't it special that even though you're in the United States and I'm in Australia, I can still talk to you this way. And because it's night time for you when it's daytime for me, it's a bit hard to talk to you at the same time but I'm going to talk to you this way on this little video. So, welcome to the world of Nims Island. Nims Island has been a special world to me for a long, long time, since I was even younger than some of you. Because when I was about eight or nine, my grandparents lived on Vancouver Island in Canada, and we went to visit them on a big ferry. But on the way, we passed a tiny little island, and I thought, I'd love to run away and live on an island, all by myself. So when we went home, which was in Alberta in Canada, I started writing a story about a little girl and a little boy who both run away from an orphanage and live on an island. And a long time later, when I was a grown-up writer, I was writing a story about a girl who was writing to an author. And the author was a very famous author, and the little girl thought her life would be exciting. But the author's life was actually very quiet, because authors just stay home and write. But the author was very famous, and she maybe thought the little girl's life wouldn't be so interesting. And I thought, the little girl's life is much more exciting than the author's. And I thought, because she lives on an island, and then after I tried writing this story about 12 times, I remembered the story I'd written when I was nine. And I felt how it felt to be the girl who wanted to live on an island and who wanted to be good at doing things because I wasn't always good at doing things. And I started to write the story as you will be reading it now. And so I'm going to read you the first little tiny bit. And I'll show you the book cover while I do it. In a palm tree, on an island, in the middle of the wide blue sea was a girl. Nim's hair was wild, her eyes were bright, and around her neck she wore three cords. One was for a spyglass, one for a whirly whistling shell, and the other for a fat red pocket knife in a sheath. With the spyglass at her eye, she watched her father's boat. It sailed out through the reef to the deeper dark ocean, and Jack turned to wave, and Nim waved back, though she knew he couldn't see. Then the white sails caught the wind and blew him out of sight, and Nim was alone. For three days and three nights, whatever happened or needed doing, Nim would do it. That's kind of what the story is about in a way. Whatever happens or needed doing, Nim would do it. And the fun thing is when we're writing a story or when we're reading a story, we can do anything. And sometimes those things are harder to do in real life. But I think every time you play in a story and do things in a story, you get a little bit stronger in your own life. And to me, that's one of the really magical things about reading and writing. And I hope that as you read, you will not just have fun with it, but also think about some of the adventures you might want to have. And if the adventures are a little bit crazier than you might be able to have, you can write your own stories. And I'm also just quickly going to show you a couple of other books because another school studying Nims Island just wrote to me and a lot of the kids asked if I could write a second book. Well, I have already written a second book quite a long time ago and it's actually a bit hard to find in the United States now, but this is the American cover. And you can find it in libraries, but it's hard to buy. 
if you want to buy it, if your school wants to get one for the library or something, this is the Australian cover and you can still get that on places like Book Depository or Amazon. And I'm, but I'm hoping that you know you might be able to find it in a library. So in the second book, no, I'm not going to tell you what happens in the second book because then you'd find out too much about what happens in the first book. This second book became a movie just like the first one and it was the movie instead of Nimitzi was called Return to Nim's Island. And so maybe after you've done all your reading, you might be able to see the movies Nim's Island and Return to Nim's Island. And this is the third book, which is a bit easier to buy because you can get it on Amazon. And again, I'm hoping that it might be in a library or that your school library can, can get it so you can follow on the adventures. So that is the last one that I'm going to write. And that's why I think that if you want more Nim stories, you can write your own and figure out what does Nim do for her next adventure. But whatever you do, have lots of fun reading, have lots of fun, lots of fun exploring the story together because it is just so special to have everyone reading together. And I hope that you'll share some pictures with me of some of the activities you do and things you do along the way. So have a lovely, lovely one school, one book with Nims Island. Bye bye.